Hey folks, Kevin here. Well, recently I posted a video uh, with the first phase or day one of taking and doing a great deal of weeding over here and extracting the kidney beans that were here, transplanting some of the, the plants such as the hyssop, the uh, uh, locust tree, uh, columbine, all of those, and then going ahead using the flail mower, clearing this area, and then starting to pull all the weeds out of this bed. I ended up leaving that video, and I'll put a link to this video up in the upper right hand corner. But I ended up ending this video uh, saying that, geez, I've got to take some time to think about how I'm going to do deal with the plethora of uh, rhizomes or roots from the a yellow wood sorrel which had overtaken this bed and killed all of many of the strawberry plants. Now the strawberry plants have recently, uh, I went ahead uh, the day before yesterday, we had a big windstorm yesterday so I couldn't do any recording or or do anything out here really. Uh, I went ahead and, and uh, replanted the strawberry bed ultimately and I used uh, bumblebee and the dump trailer to go ahead and fill up this bed and that's what this video is all about. It's, it's phase two or day two of uh, dealing with uh, the weed issues that I had in this bed and then putting compost in there and ultimately uh, replanting the strawberry plants that I pulled out. So the, the video is going to go through a few phases, a lot of GoPro footage. Uh, and the GoPro footage is going to start off with me going ahead and taking out these, these strawberry plants. And the strawberry plants, in the roots of, of the strawberry plants, intermix amongst them in the surface, is just a ubiquitous amount of, uh, of yellow uh, wood sorrel roots just running laterally. And, uh, and there are just so many of these roots in there that it really challenged me to think how am I going to deal with this because maybe I should just go ahead and, and trash all of these strawberries or stick them in the woods or stick them off to the edge someplace that I don't care, care about the yellow wood sorrel coming back. Uh, or I could go ahead and leave this bed barren for uh, use solarization and then use oculation to kill off all of those those plants that would emerge. So those were options for me. And when I thought about it, I thought about with uh, uh, using a tilther uh, through the process. And so what, what this video is going to show is the phases that I went through to, to get this bed ultimately uh, replanted. So phase one was basically coming through, digging out the strawberry plants with the root, with the ball clusters with soil in most of them, and putting them in the wheelbarrow. So I gathered up all the strawberry plants from the wheel uh, and put them out of, out of this bed and put them into the wheelbarrow. I then took the wheelbarrow and put it into the workshop area in a dark area so it'd be relatively cool. And I knew I wanted to get these plants back into the ground before day's end, which I was able to do. The next thing I did was I took the garden tilther. And uh, I came through because when I dug down into the bed, I could see maybe it was three to four inches or maybe just one to two inches where it was densely packed with the yellow wood sorrel roots all going laterally almost... Uh, uh, like uh, almost like woven cloth, uh, just a, a, a tremendous amount of these these roots. And so I decided to use the tilther to go over the surface to break it up. And typically, I, you don't want to, like with quack grass or bind weed or probably even wood sorrel, if it's really well established, you really don't want to break it up with a tilling mechanism because then you've just got multiple times more problems and all. But one of the things that I thought that I'd do, if I had used the tilther at really high speeds, it may not break it up as much as it would it would gather up, like gathering uh, yarn <laughs> uh, in a ball. And that's what it did do. There were still some strawberry plant roots there, so they all got intermixed on the horizontal uh, axle or a horizontal steel bar that the, that the, the, the small little uh, tines come off of. And so that did a really good job of, of 
just jam packing the uh, tilther with all of these roots and then I just kept peeling all the roots off. So I did this multiple times going up and down the bed trying to gather as much as possible. Then I used the garden rake to smooth out the area and bring all of the, uh, to gather up more of the superficial ones, the long ones. Then I used a leaf rake to gather up even smaller ones. Then I went back with the garden tilter again and I kept using the garden tilter until I no longer started getting clumps or, or consolidation of those roots on the, uh, on the hor horizontal axle of the, uh, the tilter. Then after I was all done with it, an important thing to note, I really cleaned it up very well and I used a propane, uh, um, yes, a propane torch to heat up all the tines just in case there were any small root segments because I knew I'd be using it again. The next thing I did was I used Bumblebee to right up on here to go ahead and uh, load the uh, compost that I had in the uh, dump trailer into the bed. And I went down and I made a nice big crown over the surface of the bed. Then I got the tilter out that had already been cleaned. So the bed was down. Now these blocks, these are rumble wall blocks. They're four inches by eight inches by 16 inches. So you may be able to tell from the video, it's the depth below the top of the, of the top block was down about six inches universally over the whole bed after this whole process. And my thoughts the night before when I was thinking about this was, geez, if I could get, get down eight, 10, maybe 12 inches, the, maybe those wood sorrel roots may not survive or they'd be so debilitated after one time popping up in the spring that I could just pull them one time and devitalize them and they wouldn't be a problem coming back. So we'll have to see in the spring if this is going to work. So I took Bumblebee and I loaded up the whole bed. I came back through with the rake to try and shape it so I could fill any low spots because there's a lot of air in amongst the compost when you put it there and it's gonna settle an awful lot. So I redistributed the compost the way that I wanted it. Then I took a Bumblebee and I used the bucket to press down on it. I wanted to compact the soil. Typically you wanna aerate the soil. Well, because that was another thing. I said, geez, if I compact the soil, maybe I can make decrease some of the oxygen potentially for the roots and, and just make it more challenging for those roots to come up because the roots to the strawberry plants are gonna be much higher than, than this, than where the yellow wood sorrel roots would be. So I went ahead, compacted down the, the compost. Then I used Bumblebee again to reload another layer on top of it, w making a crown. Then I used the, uh, then I walked along the surface of the margins to compact down the edges, used the tilter again to break up any chunks in the material, just trying to, to although it does loosen things up and uh, creates more air space, I knew that it would settle once I started watering it significantly. So the lower layers were very co compacted there's at least eight, eight inches minimally on the sides and probably 12 inches in the center of the bed. And the strawberries are planted off of the sides. They're, they're not, they're replanted off to the sides. After getting the bed shaped and getting it tilted and smoothed out and shaped to the form that I wanted it, I came along with the garden rake again and edged up the sides so that it was nice and mounted. So I had at least six inches on the margins. I, knew that, I know that this is all going to consolidate as the winter progresses this year. And then I got the strawberry plants out from uh, inside the workshop area where I had them stored. And, uh, and a lot of them were under soil, so they, uh, and a lot of them, I knew I was going to go ahead and be removing all the soil and any uh, roots that weren't strawberry roots. So these plants really took a big hit. I don't know if very many of these strawberry plants will survive. But I'll put a link in the upper right hand corner to a year ago in June when I transplanted the ones that I got from free from a person on Craigslist. You know, they ended up doing pretty well, even though in the heat of the summer is not the time to do transplanting strawberry plants, but it did work and they were successful. Now this time I pulled out all the soil, pulled out, damaged a lot of the roots in the hopes of getting rid of the wood sorrel roots. 
Got them all replanted in here, watered the soil before putting them in the, into the soil, watered the soil as I was doing it, and I soaked each one of the plants before getting them into the, into the soil as well. So that's where we are at this point. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. This is going to be a long YouTube video uh, with showing uh, time-lapse videography of the whole process. And uh, so, and I'll put some music to it. So hopefully you get something out of this. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. Share it with your friends. Give us a thumbs up if you think this was informative, inspiring, or thoughtful, or you thought it was crazy. <laughs> and uh, by all means, folks, have a super fantastic day. Bye-bye now.